Okay, I'm shorting this again. I think I was probably live on my wrong page um, because I couldn't see myself. So I think I went live somewhere else. Like, okay, yes. Now I think I'm live on the right page. Ah, I hate when that happens. So, hello. <laughs> I'm late. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So thanks everyone for joining me. Like I said, I'm so sorry I'm late. I think I was live on my personal page, maybe. I don't know where I was, but wherever I was, I wasn't here. So I'm late, but we're still going to have a good time. So obviously it's Facebook Live time. So it's around, what is it now? 7.04 Eastern, 6.04 Central, 5.04 Mountain, where I am, yay, and 4.04 um Pacific. So yay. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm so excited. And, um, I was, I was starting to tell a little story time on my other page. And then I realized that I was not, um, on the right page because I think, like I said, I think I was on my personal page because I started seeing people pop in that shouldn't have popped in <laughs> like people that aren't stampers. You know what I mean? When that happens, you have people that, um, well, you guys probably don't if you don't do Facebook lives. Um, as you're doing Facebook live, sometimes you can see as people pop on and it'll say, oh, so-and-so is watching you. Well, if you go live on your personal page, people will start seeing you that like my husband's friends, there's no way that they're stampers. They're not members of this page that we're on right now. So they are probably just looking through Facebook and there I was. So they started watching me. So anyways, yay. Now we're live on the right page. Everything is good. So, um, <clears throat> In case you guys were wondering, yes, the Everything is Rosie bundle is still available. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this name, but hello, Nyoka. Nyoka? She's first time she's watching me. So hello and welcome. I hope you enjoy what we have today because I'm excited. Like I said, the Everything is Rosie bundle is still available. And I'm going to use it on, I'm going to use it with everything that, that with the, bleh. I'm going to use it with the stuff that it comes with. Um, on one project and I'm going to use the stamps on something else just because um, the stamps are, I just love flowers and so you can just use flowers on anything. So yes. Also, <coughs> I said her name right. Yay. Okay, good. Also, just so you guys know, since our new catalog is going to be going live um, June 4th, um, those of you that are my customers should be receiving yours in the mail. I know Teresa's has already gotten hers. And, um, probably a few others of you have probably gotten yours too. So the catalogs are arriving. I always send one to myself. I got mine today. So, um, yay, they're on the way if you haven't gotten it yet. Um, and of course we always have new in colors when a new catalog goes live. And so then I always do what I call my in color club, uh, which is a five month commitment. And each month of the club, a person receives, um, all the in color items for, uh, one month. So like say, you're going to receive, this is a pretty peacock. Yeah, that's right. So you're receiving a half a pack of cardstock in that kit. You will receive the ink pad and the ink refill. You will get the marker, which I don't have yet. We weren't able to pre-order those. You will get a couple yards of the ribbon. This is the pretty peacock ribbon. You will get 18 of the faceted dots. So every color has faceted dots. You will get um, four sheets of the designer series paper and here are all the patterns for that and then we also have stamp blends markers in uh, four of the in colors and if you want to add those to your package each month you can for an extra ten dollars um, so the cost of the club is $33.99 a month and that's uh, shipping everything to you each month and I usually do it through PayPal I can do a credit card if that's how you prefer to pay but I'm still taking signups for that. It's going to start in June. So if you're interested, shoot me an email, barb at barbstamps.com, and I will get you hooked up with um, joining the club. I also do product shares out of the catalog. So that means uh, I, I, get, I order all the papers, all the ribbons, all the embellishments, and then I package them all up and then I sell them for... Uh, like if you get every single thing, it's $102.99 plus the shipping. I also offer just the papers out of the catalog or just the ribbons or just the embellishments. So you can check all that stuff out on my blog, Barb, or just barbstamps.com. I have all the information there. Um, so you just want to email me, let me know if you're interested. Then I'll start sending out some PayPal invoices here soon. And then we'll start getting the stuff. So yay. 
Also, for any of you who are considering uh, joining Stampin' Up! Now is a really good time to do that because you can add brand new products to your starter kit, including these new ink colors that I just showed you. You can add those to your starter kit. You can add some of our new stamp sets, our new dyes, new papers. Uh, we have a selection, selection of ribbons. Got a hair poking me in the eye. And other things. So yeah, if you're interested in that, it's a really good deal. It's $99 plus tax if there's tax where you live and you get to choose $125 worth of items in the kit. So um, it's really a good deal. Becoming a demonstrator simply means that you um, now get to order everything at a discount. There's no requirements except that you have to maintain a minimum amount to stay a demonstrator, but you don't have to do parties. You don't have to go live on Facebook. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. So it's a really good deal and it's only $99. So consider that. Um, again, questions, email me, barb at barbstamps.com. I'm happy to help you um, if you have any questions about that. Ooh, and then lastly, the uh, Hugs for Shelly paper pumpkin kits are on the way. I haven't gotten mine yet. I'm thinking it'll probably come tomorrow. Um, it's usually about five days after they run um, the credit cards that I usually get my kit. So it should be here like tomorrow or the next day, hopefully. And um, yeah, that'll be fun. And now all of a sudden I just remembered, I can't remember if I said this on my... <laughs> The live I was on on my own page, which I had to delete, or if I did it on this one, I will not be live next week. So next Thursday, I won't be live on Facebook. And the reason for that is my daughter is graduating from high school a week from Sunday. And I do have some family starting to arrive um, next Thursday. So I don't want to be live. I want to be present in the moment with them. Um, her last day of school is Tuesday. So um, it's getting real, people. And then she's going to leave and I'm going to cry. So um I'm going to try not to do that right here on Facebook because that might be a little embarrassing. But yes, I am going to be very sad um, for her to go. When she was younger, we clashed, you know, like butted heads. Oh my gosh, so much. But as she's gotten older, um, we are we, we get along great now. We're really good friends. Um, I've kind of had to give her the, you know, that push into adulthood where you just, you got to make your own decisions. You got to do your own thing because pretty soon you're going to be gone. I'm not going to be able to do that stuff for you. So um, I think with her becoming a little bit more mature, that's helped us to connect um, differently. And so rather than me having a parent-child relationship with her, we are also um, friends, which is wonderful. So I am going to truly miss her a lot. And I have to show you guys something funny. For Mother's Day, my kids got me this. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it because it is so gigantic. This is like the biggest card I have ever gotten in my life. It's just gigantic. Um, so they surprised me with that and they both wrote some nice notes here on the inside um, Which was really nice and so that was fun to get surprised with that gigantic card I asked them how much it cost. They told me three dollars. Not really sure if I believe them or not Three dollars seems a little cheap for something like that. But hey, you know, whatever it, it touched my heart and the little messages that they wrote were super sweet. So yes Okay um, I think, oh, I got you prizes. So last week I made these three items. We made a fun little candy box with the Everything is Rosie bundle. And we wrapped some chocolates. Oops, can't get the box open. Ugh. So we have some cute little chocolates that we also wrapped with the fun paper. We made a cute little tag. And yes, chocolates and uh, stamping go together really well. We also made this fun happy birthday card where this kind of pulls out um, and then we have the clouds in the background and I there's a funny if you guys want to watch my last week's video and to find this card you know yeah every time I do Facebook live I always screw something up make a mistake what have you so um, I think one of the best reasons for anyone to watch me live is to see how to fix mistakes so yeah so I'm sure we're gonna be doing that again today and then we made this Father's Day card um, using the Geared Up Garage stamp set and dies. And then we used the, this is from the Everything is Rosy, this paper. It's from the Everything is Rosy bundle. Um, there's that nice striped pattern that's great for guy cards. And then I also use the note cards and envelopes. Oh, there's dimensional backing stuck on here. Don't, those things get everywhere. They're all over my house. Ugh. Okay, the note cards and envelopes. Um, so we had that fun envelope liner. So 
uh, the winner of these things for sharing my video. So please share my video because I really would like to reach lots more people. So lots more people can see me fix mistakes. <laughs> Anyways, it is Joni Laughlin. So Joni, um, I don't know you, so I will need you to message me your um, address uh, through Facebook um, and then I can get that stuff out to you. I also wanted to give a little uh, thank you for you guys leaving comments and asking me questions and giving me hearts and emojis like that when I'm uh, stamping. So this is for Janet Rose. And Janet, I know Janet, but I don't know Janet's address. So Janet, you're going to need to message me with your address and then I can get that paper out to you. I'm going to put that back there. Um, yeah. So thank you guys. So yeah, go ahead and ask me questions. Uh, leave me comments, heart emojis, and you know, thumbs up emojis are always appreciated as is the sharing because you sharing the video helps more people watch me, which, um, it just helps me. So, all right, I'm going to flip the camera around and show you a few things along with our new stamp cleaning pad. We're going to clean this and see how clean we can get it. So let me flip this camera. Hopefully that was pretty quick and painless. And then I'm going to zoom this in just a tad because it seems like it's never zoomed in quite enough. And so now that I am live on the correct page, I should be able to see myself and make sure that I have... Here, you can look at this pretty stuff while I'm checking that out. Um, well, at least I saw myself a little bit ago. Yep, there I am. Okie dokie, great. Okay, so these are the things that I have created so far with the Everything is Rosy bundle. I'm going to put my glasses on. And I showed them last week, but some of you may not have been watching, so I'm going to show them again. So this is what we call the drapery fold or the curtain fold. And normally you need a seven and a quarter inch piece of paper to do this. But I have a video on YouTube showing you that how you can do it with just six inch uh, paper. Since all the papers in this kit are six by six. Um, yeah, there's a way to cheat and make this uh, fun fold without um, a longer piece of paper. Here's one that I did where I actually used the uh, rose gold shimmer paint and just dotted it all over the background of my card, which I think is really cool. Uh, the one thing I would caution you about if you tried to do this method is put the dots all over the card and then put it somewhere where you're not going to touch it for probably 10-ish mm, minutes or so because um, it, it does smear if it's not dry. So this is the one that I did live um, when I first got my kit. Um, I kind of did this on the fly, which I don't ever do, but um, it turned out pretty good. And with the kit, I mean, everything in here is just so gorgeous. It's hard not to make an ugly, it, you can't make an ugly card with it is what I'm trying to say. Here's another one that we did. Um, let's see, when to do this? I did, made this last week. So we have the fun ribbon through the tag. We have the designer series paper. And here's another one. These two are exactly the same. I just used different tags out of the kit. Um, so yeah, super fun. Love that edgelet die there. Really pretty. This is another one that I've done. I do have a video on this on YouTube also. Here's some more of those fun dots with the shimmer paint. Again, you need to dot it and then put it aside because I, I made the card and then I smeared it so I had to redo it, which is a bummer. This one is an idea I got from my friend. Um, I haven't put the sentiment on here yet, but um, it's fun. And then this fun little framed art piece that I do, um, that I'm going to hang up in my stamp room down here. So. The bundle is still available if you guys are interested in purchasing it. The item code is 150059. And if you use my host code, um, I have free gifts with purchase. So check that out. All right. I want to see how clean I can get this stamp. So this is our, this is in the new catalog. And this is called the stamp cleaning pad. It's designed to get stubborn inks off of photopolymer and the rubber stamps that we sell. So this is a stamp that I have out of the Forever Lovely stamp set. And this is, it's stained. It's not dirty, it's stained. This is the color that it is. If I was to ink this up in yellow, it would stamp yellow, not pink, but it's just stained. And sometimes that, it bothered me when the photopolymer stamps first came out and then I kind of got used to it because there was nothing you could do. You couldn't get them any cleaner than this. This is as clean as it's gonna get. But now we have this new pad, so I'm hoping that it will um, clean a lot better. So I'm gonna bring some scratch paper in here just because I don't wanna mess up my my beautiful grid paper there. So it looks kinda of like one of our memento pads and you just open it up and you have this pad here and it's a little smelly, uh, not too terrible. Like I didn't, I didn't notice it when I opened up the pad but if you actually bring it to your nose and smell it, it is a little bit smelly. And so um, according to the directions, you're just supposed to clean your stamp, which it's already clean. And well, maybe it's 
got some dust on it. So I'll just wipe it off with the cloth that I have here that has water on it. Um, and then they just say to tap and tap. Oh my heavens, look at that. And you just keep going. And you can get it cleaner. Holy cow, look at all that that came off. And then they do say to make sure you clean it with water afterwards because this is a kind of a solvent. Um, and so you want to make sure that your stamp, uh, you don't have the solvent left on there because the solvent could damage the stamps. So, yes. Well, let's see. That is actually a lot cleaner than it was. I don't think it's perfect by any means, but... Uh, maybe if you just keep working it and working it and working it for quite a while, um, maybe it'll actually get super, super clean. I don't know. We're not going to take the time to do that. But it definitely made a big difference, I would say. Uh, you guys saw it just like I did, how pink it was, and now it's on there. And now some of you may be asking me, well, if your pad is stained, is that going to affect the stamps? I don't think so. I haven't heard of any, you know, of it like this color coming off onto your stamps. Um, so I don't think that it will. I think the pad just gets stained now with the ink that he's taking off of the stamp. So yeah, so this is something that I am super excited about and I am hoping you guys are super excited about it too. I think it's an awesome, awesome addition to our stamp line um, to get these things clean. And again, uh, make sure that after you clean them with this solvent pad that you wipe this off with like something with water. And so that's why I said I just have this cloth that I just ran under this kitchen sink, uh, got it full of water and now I just clean that off. So Yes, I'm thinking that is going to be my new best friend because I really don't like stained stamps. Like I said, I sort of had to live with it because that's how it was, but I don't think I do anymore. So I'm happy about that. Okay, first project. We are going to use the Everything is Rosy bundle because it's amazing. All right, so for the card. We're going to use this amazing Knight of Navy Rose Gold Metallic Edge Ribbon. We may or may not use this. I haven't decided if I like what I did with it or not, so you guys may have to help me. Uh, we are going to use the foil sheets. And then here's all my scraps that I have that are pieces that I've cut. Oh, and here's my little, what are these called? Mirrored embellishments. So we're going to use this pattern right here. I'll show you in case some of you are new and haven't seen them before. Here are the patterns. So here's one side of all the patterns. And then when you flip them over, here are the other side. Okay. So we're going to use this pattern here. Put the rest of these back. And I'm going to cut that to four by four. All right, let me sh shove all of this back in here. Okay, paper trimmer, and I just, here we go. All right, so four by four. Bring it down to four. And we'll start here at two where we had our cut. Oops, I don't think I went quite far enough. There we go. Okay, and this can go into my scrap pile. And now we have a 4x4 four four piece of designer series paper. Put this trimmer away. All right, so I need to get my rest of my papers out here. So I have a 8.5 by 5.5 piece of thick whisper white. Um, I do like to use our thick white and vanilla when I am uh, for as a, if I'm using white as a card base. I just find that it holds up a little bit better. Um, it's a little sturdier. It doesn't buckle or bend like Whisper White can just because it's thinner. Um, oh, I already had cut that piece. What do you know about that? Oh, now we have a scrap or we can make another, another one. Okay, so we have our rose gold foil sheet. And I'm going to bring in a two and a quarter inch circle punch. And we are going to get a circle with that. So now we can stick this in here. And what else do we need? Uh, we have a layer of white. So we're going to have white on white. Get that out of the way. And then I have a scrap of white to do some stamping. And then I have this little guy here, which I can't remember how much it me what it measures. It is just a hair under three inches square. Okay. And then I also need a piece of Rococo Rose. 
which is one of our new in colors. And this needs to measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So it's two and three quarters that way. Okay. So there's the Rococo Rose. And I will bring in some other pinks that we have just so you can sort of see the difference um, in the color. So this is uh, powder pink, which is a current in color that is retiring. That's the Rococo Rose. Uh, let's see, what else could we throw in here? Uh, here's Melon Mambo. So you can see they are quite different. Uh, Blushing Bride, different. And I think, oh, Forty Flamingo, what's that? And here's Forty Flamingo. So here's the Rococo Rose, and you can see that it is definitely different than any of the other colors that we do um, have. So um, that's gonna be a nice addition to our line along with the other colors. So I'm super excited to uh, use those. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a little fun fold. So we've got a four by four piece of designer series paper and I am going to fold it in half on itself. What is the purple color? Evelyn, I'm going to hold this. Is this the color you're talking about when you say the purple color? Because if you are, this is the new Rococo Rose, um, one of our new in colors. Okay, so we folded that in half. Now we're going to open it up and we're going to fold it the opposite direction. Okay, there we go, and bone fold that as well. So now we open that up, and now we're going to bring all these points into the center, like so. The dark, all right, hold on. So I'm guessing you're talking about this one, right, Evelyn? If this is the one you're talking about, this is Melon Mambo. Okay, so we had the Powder Pink, Blushing Bride, Melon Mambo, the Forty Flamingo, and then the Rococo Rose. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so we're still folding all of these to the middle. Okay, get up there. There we go. bone folder to get those corners nice and crisp and then we're going to take each one of these and we're going to fold the point back other square on my left so over here somewhere I don't see anything else that's a color of cardstock Evelyn I am so sorry I have no idea what you're talking about on my left on my left is the bag of the papers from the everything is rosy kit so this would be the foil sheet um, if that's what you were maybe seeing in the camera okay so now we're gonna fold these back and so we're making I don't even know what you call this it's a little uh, technique that I taught at one of my classes here a number of years ago and I saw it oh is this what we're talking about yeah this is night of navy oh thank you Sue sorry <laughs> I kept thinking, what purple color? I don't see anything purple. This is dark blue. Okay, Knight of Navy. <laughs> Thank you guys for helping me out here. Okay, so this is what we have so far. A fun little piece. And then the Rococo Rose, we're going to just add to the middle of this. So again, this was two and three quarter inches square. And it's just gonna pop right in there. Okay, that's done. Um, and then this I'm going to mount on the Knight of Navy just to give it a little pop of color when it's actually on the card. Whoops. I think I need to get a new holder for my snail because it keeps uh, like backing up on itself. And that does happen when your holder gets old. And so I think I need to order a new one. Okay, so then this Knight of Navy piece was about, it was a little less than three. Not a whole lot less than three, like maybe a couple, like a sixteenth maybe. Okay, so now we have that done. Then our foil circle that we got, we're going to stick inside here. And we're going to center that. I don't think I've done any mistakes yet, you guys. So, yeah, the minute I say that. Here comes a big one, probably. Okay, 
So we've got that thing done, so we're gonna set that to the side. Now we have our Whisper White layer, which is four by five and a quarter, and we are going to stamp our sentiment on here. And so out of the stamp set, we're gonna be using the one that says, time to celebrate all the lovely things in life, starting with you. These sentiments are just really nice, and I love the fonts. I love the two different fonts in some of these. I just, I just really like this whole set. It's just really fun. Okay. Hello, everyone who's joining me. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Marilyn. Uh, who else is here? Pam. Hello, Pam. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp this down here near the bottom. Let's hope that I don't get uh, any ink. I was pretty heavy-handed with the inking of that, so. <laughs> okay, good. See, I have ink all over this. So I'm just going to grab that cloth and clean it off because I don't like a bunch of ink on there because you know what happens and then it gets on my hands and then it gets all over my stuff and then I'm sad okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut three pieces of this amazing lovely ribbon so we need three so there's one and two and three okay oops there's some trash and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put these ribbons on my card just one on top of each other just like as a background and just because the ribbon is so oh gosh it is so shiny it's so pretty I think move it up just to here so that is about where I want it so I'm using some grid paper to kind of see that um, it's even and then I'm just going to wrap it to the back Give a little piece of scotch tape there. Put it back on my grid paper. And bring it over so it's about in the same spot. Once you get that first one, you know, in the right spot, then the others will just line up perfectly. Okay. So, and then we're going to take the second one and put it right above. And again, wrapping it to the back. Okay. And since that first one's straight, these rest of these should um, go on pretty good. Okay. Isn't that just, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. This ribbon is just amazing. I love it so much. I'm actually sad that it's not a ribbon that we can actually buy by itself because that would be awesome. Any of these metallic edged ribbons I just love. Of course we have the two in the catalog, the white with the silver and the vanilla with the gold. Um, but this color and of course the berry burst and silver is retiring but that is just so pretty. Okay then we're going to bring in some dimensionals and we're going to just put them right above the ribbon. Hello, Janet. How are you? Oh, Janet, you won a prize. So you need to message me your um, mailing address. Okay. Yay, Janet. She's here. She can claim her prize. Okay, so that is going to go right there. And then we can add this to the card base. And we'll just add some glue. Okay, and that, like so, okay, so get that stuck on there, okay, now that, we're not done, I mean, I know it kind of looks done, but it's not, so now we need to add some flowers, so we're going to use the stamp set, of course, <clears throat> what did I do with it, and we're going to use, what am I using, this large flower here, the small flower here, uh, this leaf image and then uh, one of the die cuts but I already have them done because as you guys know my big shots not near where I film so I'm going to show you how I've been working with my everything is rosy bundle um, I started out by so I have all the leaves I just randomly stuck the leaves on this plate okay and then I took a piece of white cardstock, I stuck it in here, got it all butted up in the corner, magnet. I inked it up and I pressed it all into place, 
released and then I took this sheet over to my Big Shot and I was very, very careful and I die cut each one and I was very, very careful to make sure that they were on there perfectly lined up and so I only had to do this once. So now, um, every time I wanna do some of these leaves, I just have to use a blanks. And so, where are, oh man, why do I always lose stuff? No, did I stick them in here? Where did I put them? Oh, you guys, every day is a struggle around here. Oh wait, these are them, okay. So then, I just take the dies and I just willy-nilly add a tiny little scrap. So I just cut a whole bunch of just blanks. So I have a bunch of these. Well, yeah, there's a few left in here. I've used some of them. So I have a bunch of white blanks. So I stick it on there. I then ink up. So I have this leaf here. So I'm going to ink that up. Okay. And then I bring it over. I press it into place. And then every single one of these is perfect every single time. So I only have to be very diligent about this one time. Now, um, and I have multiple plates. So if I need to use my Stamparatus for something else, I can just take this plate off and replace it with a different plate. Um, it does come with two. And since I have been creating a lot with the Rosy Bundle, I'm just leaving this set up the way it is. So I can keep using it to make more leaves. And I did the exact same thing with the flowers. So you can see I have the flowers mounted on the opposite side of the plate. I did the same thing with them. I put a piece of cardstock in here. I inked up the flowers. I stamped them. Same thing. I was very diligent about cutting them out so that they would be nice and perfect. And so now every time I need a flower, I can just throw in again one of these blanks that you can run through the big shot, you know, in two seconds, you can get yourself a blank. And then you just put the blank in there, you ink up the flower, you stamp it, and it's good to go. So I've got my flower already done. So I did all that work just to show you that I already have a stamped flower, and here it is. And then I already, well, I just made this because I need this. And here's another one that I did use. I cut a little bit of it off. And then I have one of the die cuts out of the kit. Here are the set of dies, and here are all of the dies cut out. So you have this gorgeous edge piece here, these two little uh, fun pieces, uh, the foliage, and of course all the stamped images that you can then die cut. Um, this one here is this little flower, but I stamped it in blue and then layered it on top just to give you guys an idea of what you can do. You can stack them. And yeah, so um, the dies are super fun. And I do this a lot. If I'm like working a lot with a bundle, I will make one of these cheat sheets. Now you can only use it once. Well, I mean, maybe if I was really lucky, if I took these stamps off, I might be able to replace them, like lay them in this blank and then put the lid over and pick them up. That might work. I don't know. I haven't done that. But like I said, I've been working with this bundle so much because I absolutely love it so much that I'm just leaving this set up so I can uh, easily cut flowers quickly. Okay, enough about that. Wow, that that was a lot of blah, 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 wasn't it? Oh, and now I just dumped some of these out. Okay, where's my lid? Oh, butterfingers. Okay, get in there. All right, so we don't need those. We don't need the Stamparatus anymore. Put that over here. Oh, we don't need this. All right, so we have some flowers, and I also have another uh, scrap of white, and I'm going to use the one and three quarter inch punch to get a circle here. And this particular punch is retiring, the one and three quarter inch circle. Um, I tend to keep all of my circle punches even if they retire because I'm a big fan of punching stuff out quickly. I just really, really enjoy doing that because it's uh, super quick. And I also forgot the name of this tiny little flower middle here. Okay, so I am going to use a mini dimensional right there in the middle of that flower. And I'm just gonna pop this little centerpiece on there, okay? Then I'm gonna add this little foliage piece. See, another dimensional backing. Where did that even come from? Okay, so we have this little piece of foliage and I just want a little bit of it sticking out. I don't need much. Then I'm going to use this leaf thing here and I cut that off because I only need this part here. Do you think this kit would go well with the past blushing bride glimmer paper? 
Ooh. Yeah, you know, Cheryl, I think I would. Where did you get the round Stampin' Up! Puzzle? Oh my gosh, Ellen, I have had these. I've been a demonstrator for like 16 years, and uh, this used to be a supply item that we could order, and I ordered them back in the day, and I just reuse them over and over and over, so that's how come I have some with a Stampin' Up! logo on them. Uh, and yeah, Cheryl, I think it would look gorgeous with that blushing dry to glimmer paper, so if you do have some of that, you should absolutely get it out. Okay, we have our leaf, because I'm going to put that just kind of behind our little foliage piece. And then I have this little piece left over, and I'm just going to kind of trim around it a bit. I wonder if I have any of that glimmer paper left. Now that makes me curious, Cheryl. Sometimes I have like scraps of things that I don't always get rid of, you know, like I have a, an annual sale where I, you know, sell my retired items, but um, I don't sell everything. Okay. So that's done. Now we need a dimensional. And we're going to stick that on this white. And then the white, we're going to glue, get that to the inside of the card. We're going to bring this back in. Seems like it's been forever since we've looked at this. Okay. And I'm just going to add that to the inside there. And then we have this. So it's like a really 3D, really cool. And because there's so much bulk on the front, that's why I like to use the thick cardstock because it won't buckle, it won't tip over. Um, it's just really nice. It does fold flat for mailing. You can put those down, but then when somebody opens it, um, you know, then they can see all the gorgeousness of the inside. Now, the last thing that I would do to this, and I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to set it aside, is I'm going to take my shimmer paint. I'm going to shake it up. Are they about the same size? Yeah, they're exactly the same, Ellen. They're the same size. Um, like here is one of our little accessories containers. It's the same. It's the same container. It just ended up that it had a Stampin' Up! logo on it uh, back in the day, like I said, that we could purchase. So, Okay, so now I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool. I have a stylus end on here. And I'm going to dip that into the lid. And I'm going to add some dots to the center of my flower. Okay. And then I'm also going to add a couple. I'm going to add one right here. And I'm going to add a couple right here. Okay. So now, like I said, I'm going to set this aside and not touch it because I don't want it to smear. Because I don't want whoever wins it next week to have a crappy card that Barb's smeared all over. And then I'm just going to kind of wipe that off a little bit. I'm going to bring in my chamois and then clean the rest of it off. Okay. All right, project number one is done, guys. I hope you liked it. I just can't get enough of this kid, I'm telling you. Okay. And I can put all these things back. Our leaves, our scrap. I don't think that. Whoa, now I'm throwing stuff around. Okay. And the main parts of the kit. All right. Project number two. Okay, we are going to be using the retiring Best Birds stamp set and the, what are these called? The Birds and Blooms Thinlets dies. Um, some stuff to blend and a few other things. So we have some soft suede crumb cake and white card stocks. Get a couple more pieces out of this bag. Okay. Scrap of white. Okay. So the stamp set has um, lots of fun. And I, the thing I really love the most out of this addition, in addition to the birds, I love the birds, but I love the fonts. What color foil is in the rosy set? Ellen, it is rose gold. Uh, we don't sell it outside of that kit. Okay. So I love the fonts. I, I wish my handwriting was this good. I love it so much. Um, so you also have, so the die set has dies for the two birds, these three florally kind of images and the branch. And then it also has dies just to, um, crop birds out of, of cardstock that don't have matching stamps. Okay. So that's the best birds. And like I said, it is retiring. And we're going to do a little technique today that uses blocks, ink pad, and marker. So that's the wrong color ink pad. It's that color for this technique. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is I've got a piece, okay, first of all, soft suede, eight and a half by five and a half, your standard card base. Then I have a four by five and a quarter inch piece of soft suede that I ran through the, oh, what's this called, quilted? I think this is the quilted embossing folder. So I have this fun design on it. Then I have a piece of white that I think is three by four and a quarter, but we're gonna measure it to make sure three. Uh, yeah, three by four and a quarter. And then this piece would be like three and an eighth by four and three eighths to be uh, the layer on the back. And then we have a scrap. Okay, so we're gonna take the three by four and a quarter inch piece. I need a pad here, but I also need a blank piece of paper not one that's got stamping all over it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pad and I'm gonna ink up my block. This is a D block, okay? So I'm just adding ink to it. Whoops, oh, that looks pretty good. So you can see what I've done. I've inked it up, so it's inky. Now I'm gonna take my crumb cake marker and I'm gonna go around the edge. Just trying to make like a definitive edge on this when I stamp it. You don't have to, clearly if you don't want to, but I just uh, kind of like the way it looked after I did that, okay? So now I'm huffing on it to moisten the ink again, and I'm gonna stamp it once on the scratch paper, and then I'm gonna stamp it again on my project. So this is what I have. So I have this kind of cool looking background. You can see my marker is kind of giving me a definitive edge there, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna put my block, I'm gonna put my block onto my chamois and clean it off, because it's messy. Okay, so now I am going to layer this onto my piece of that, but first I wanna stamp my sentiment. So I have the sentiment that says thoughts for you, and I happen to have a little Night of Navy ink spot here um, that I got out of a paper pumpkin kit. So I do use these. So I just used that other um, ink pad in a different kit, so I just needed one in this one. So I just said, oh, I have a spot, we're gonna use it. Okay, so that's his thoughts for you. Let me clean that off. And of course my chamois is clean. I realize it's disgusting, but it is clean. Okay, then I am going to bring in the branch image right here and I'm gonna ink it up in soft suede. But I don't need the whole thing because I'm not gonna use the entire image. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this back in and I'm gonna tear a chunk off and I'm gonna put it right on the edge of where my uh, block image was. Make sure that's in the screen. Okay, and then I am just gonna stamp that like that, okay? So I just kind of masked off the edge so I didn't, because I didn't want this to be outside of my little enclosed area, except I did purposely put that right down there. I know you're probably thinking, oh, you, did that. you didn't do that on purpose. That I actually did. A lot of times when I'm stamping, I don't do a lot of stuff on purpose. A lot of stuff's on accident. Okay, clean that off with the old chamois. The sham wow, as somebody calls it. Is it one of my kids, one of my friends? I can't remember. Somebody calls it the sham wow. All right. So now we can get that out of the way. Now we actually can go ahead and layer these two pieces together. Okay. Like trying to get it centered sometimes with bad eyes. It's hard. The struggle is real, as they say. Well, you know what? I think I have a tiny bit of ink right there. I do. So, I don't know if any of you guys have one of these things. These are called sand erasers. Stampin' Up! doesn't sell them, but you can get them at an office supply store. Um, and they are super helpful for removing little spots of ink. Now, I couldn't, like, remove my entire sentiment there, but I just kind of gently go back and forth over this, and as you can tell, it is going away. Just take a little bit of elbow grease to get it all the way gone, and I may not be able to get the whole thing gone, but I can definitely... Uh, get off most of it so it's not super noticeable anymore. So get yourself a sand eraser if you don't have one. All right, we are now done with this ink and this ink. Now we need our memento. And we're gonna bring in one of the birds. 
the small flower and then a little kind of sprig with a flower on it. Actually, that's kind of big, so I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to ink up my stamp in Memento because I'm going to color it with my blends. Okay. We're going to bring this back in just because this is a photopolymer stamp and I want a nice image on here, so good. And then we have our little sprig. And I'm going to die cut these so I'm not really trying to stamp them nicely or anything like that. Oh, did somebody ask something? Does the chamois come in that container? Oh, Pam, it's just one of our clear stamp cases. Um, we can, you can order them as a supply. Um, you can order them out of the catalog. They come in a pack of four. I think they're like six dollars or something like that. Or if you have a stamp set that you don't, um, that you're not really using, or if you wanted to combine a couple of photopolymer stamp sets into the same case, um, you could, and then you could have, have it there. So yeah, it's just simply one of our um, clear stamp cases. All right. Okay, so now I need to do some coloring, and I'm not going to color the whole thing because I know how boring that is to watch, um, but I will go ahead and color some of it, or I'll just kind of tell you how I'm going to go about doing it. So I've got four blue markers here, Stampin' Blends. I've got the Light and Dark Knight of Navy. Um, Evelyn, yes, actually I just do, and the funny thing is about washing the chamois that I found, if you rinse it under cold water, you will get blue, greens, and purples to come out of it. If you then run it under hot water, you can finish it off by getting your reds and oranges out of it. It's the strangest thing. I do not understand the science behind it, but normally what I do is I'll just turn my hot water on, and so while the hot water is getting hot, it's cold, so I'm rinsing it out, rinsing it out, and I'm getting blues and greens and purples out of it, and then as it starts to warm up and get hotter, then I can see the reds and the oranges come out. So why that's the way it is, like I said, I don't understand the science behind it, but that's how it works. All right, so I've got the two uh, Night of Navies Dark and Light and the Balmy Blues Dark and Light. And I'm going to start out by taking my Dark Night of Navy and I'm just going to kind of run it right along the bottom here of his breast. And then a little bit on his main wing, the top of the wing, his tail feather, uh, maybe a little bit of this detail here, this detail here, and then across his head. Okay, then I'm going to bring in the Light Night of Navy. And I'm going to just sort of start circling um, around, blending it with the dark layer I just laid down, okay? And I'm going to do that all over. And then I'm going to bring in my dark, balmy blue. And I'm going to start coloring everything. And now I'm going to really start blending the light night of navy in with the dark balmy blue to kind of remove that uh, stark line if you will so you can see this is going to take me a little bit of time but you can see how it's already starting to go away so it's not like a stark line of the dark okay so i would do that then i would bring in the light and i would finish that up or oh, wait is this the dark this is the dark duh so again, we blend these together so there's not such a stark line. And then I would bring in the light, balmy blue. And after you work with it a little bit, you get a bird that looks something like this. So it probably took me, I don't know, five minutes to actually color him and get him all the way done and blended the way I wanted it. And I am not an expert at coloring it by any means. Um, in fact, I think I stink at it. But um, I get better every time I do it. And... Uh, so that's all you can do, right? And then I just color both of those. So I did do the soft suede here on the stem. I did some old olive here on the little uh, leaf that's around the bud. And then I did the buds and the flower in the same manner, put the dark in the center, and then I kind of blended it from uh, there out. Okay, so we don't need this anymore. Don't need our markers. Need these ink pads don't need that ink pad don't need that all right so now what we're gonna do oh i do need to finish this though so i am going to add some old olive to these leaves a little bit so this is the light old olive and i'm just gonna color in the leaves here 
okay this won't take long so I'm not really doing any shading or anything like that I'm just simply coloring in the leaves and my bifocals on these glasses are not so good so it's probably not perfect but you know like I said I'm not a professional okay so I'm gonna add um, these pieces to the card so I've got a uh, big dimensional for the top of his head a smaller one back here by his tail come off there and then he's gonna kind of stand on our uh, branch okay and then this one I am not doing uh, dimensionals on I am just gonna whoops add a little bit of liquid glue and that's going to go up here like it's coming in from the top of our little goodie there do you cut out the bird no lisa actually there's dyes uh, with the big shot so i have uh, the bird dye in here the flower dye and then this little uh, thing here so i did use my big shot machine and then this little flower and i'm just going to set this right down here by the sentiment like that Okay, and then I'm going to add this to the card front. And whenever I do dry embossing with embossing folders, I always use liquid glue to attach them. Um, I find that uh, snail and other adhesives don't uh, really hold that great. There's something that happens to paper when you emboss it that makes the snail not, maybe because it can't get down into the grooves. I don't really know. And then this I'm going to kind of put at an angle. So we're more dimensional backings, I swear. I end up taking them upstairs with me. Like I, my stamp room is down in my, in my basement. Um, and I end up finding dimensional backings all over the floor upstairs. So that's pretty funny. All right, so we're going to kind of do this at a little bit of an angle, a little bit cattywampus. And there we have it. So I hope you guys like that. Just in case you didn't know, like I said, these are retiring this year. Um, I... I, I think they're super cute and if you're a bird lover um, you can color these birds obviously any color you want um, and probably yours will look better than mine so there you have it so card number two card number one is still sitting over there drying oh you know what I forgot to do one thing that I wanted to do wanted to do I have a little piece of ribbon this is our pear pizzazz shimmer ribbon it's retiring also pretty and I just took a little tiny chunk of it and I folded it over on itself, I cut it off, and then I put a tiny bit of tape just to hold the ends together. And then I'm gonna add it to the side of the card here with the glue dot. So I'm gonna take the glue dot here. Thanks, you guys. So I put it on the tape, and now I can just kind of shove this underneath. And and it gets it where I want it, and then I can just press down, and it's stuck there. So there's a little tip there. And I, I find that just adding a little tiny thing like that really adds a lot to your projects. I mean, it's super inexpensive. It's easy to do. It doesn't add any bulk, so you're not worrying about, you know, the post office getting mad at you and charging you extra for your fat card. Um, it is just, it's just a super easy little thing. So, yeah, so try that sometime when you add a layer to the front of your card. Put a little piece of ribbon under there. All right, now we're going to move on to the next card. Boy, I shouldn't jinx myself by saying I don't think I've screwed anything up yet. Well, unless you guys remember something that I don't. Then just don't tell me. <laughs> All right, trying to get some of these dimensional backings out of the way. Good Lord, there's a lot. Okay, next card. This card also uses the Everything is Rosie stamp set and the dies. So we're going to use these again, but we're going to use not the not anything else in the bundle. So we're not using the colors. We're not using the papers or anything like that. Okay. So we are going to be using some Bermuda Bay cardstock. Uh, we have a white layer for the inside. We've got a striped pattern of the Brights designer series paper. And then we have a little strip of the pool party. So here's the paper that I'm talking about. This is all of the Brights colors 
in polka dots and stripes. Now, all of these packs are retiring. So if you're a big fan of polka dots and stripes, which I am, you will want to get these before they're gone because polka dots and stripes are timeless and they literally go with everything. So that's what we've got here. So my, this is my card base and it measures five and a half by six and seven eighths, okay? And we are going to score it get my trimmer in here we're gonna score it at four and a quarter okay okay so we've got this section here which is two and three eighths and then we've got this section here which is our standard card size five and a half by four and a quarter so we're gonna cut this off so this is gonna be the front this little section here and we're going to cut it from the point down to about two inches from the bottom okay so from the fold line diagonally down to the bottom so I'm just going to stick this in my trimmer with the fold line here in my track, okay? And then this side, I'm going to have about two, oh, do I need to move that up a little bit? Maybe. I'm going to have about two inches from the track to the end of the card, okay? So you just keep manipulating that. I want to make sure I keep this score line in the track, which now that I'm looking at it is not. And then down here, it's about two inches. If it's one and three quarters, two and a quarter, doesn't matter. About two inches, okay? And we're just gonna cut that off so we don't need this there's a nice scrap you can punch something out of later all right so we've got that done so now i'm going to do a little bit of stamping and i have a couple of uh well not a couple just one i have the fun what is it so you guys can sort of see it's this little uh little flower grouping with some leaves right here this small one that's super cute and I need a piece of scrap and I need a ink pad. So I've got Bermuda Bay ink and we're gonna just kind of do some random stamping where we just kind of go, whoops, I need another scrap, where we just kind of go. And I like to do, when I do random stamping, I literally like to do it randomly. I just kind of go off the whole card in some spots and then I kind of turn the stamp every so often so that every stamped image that I put down is not the same orientation. Um, and that way I feel like it's just truly random. Okay. So we will get one down there. And maybe one right there. Whoops, there was some adhesive on that. Okay. So now we're going to add adhesive to this panel on the inside here that glue booger off there and oh yes you guys please share the video um that would be awesome if you would do that and hello jay and thank you marilyn i don't always monitor the comments i try to but then i get so engrossed in stamping that i forget okay so we're gonna this is our um this is the same size this is five and a half by four and a quarter so it's gonna line up with our card base and then we're just going to fold that over okay so now we have the front of the card and then we have this fun polka dot image on the inside and then we also are going to put this on the inside so this will become like write our message and we're going to add um uh some stamped images in here too whoops my glue is getting low and so it takes a little bit longer to shake it down okay thank you valerie i appreciate that and remember, when you share the video, I put you in the drawing for uh, the cards that I make. So next week, someone's going to win all these. Okay, so then I have this. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. This one It's three quarters by four and a quarter is what this is. And that is going to go about right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that on. Well, if my glue would stop. Now, well, maybe I just need to find another one because Lord knows I have enough glue around here. Okay. So we are going to lay this across and I'm kind of using um, the stripes as a little bit of a guide so that I can see that it's straight-ish. Straight-ish. That is a word. Okay. There we have that. Next, I have a circle that I cut out uh, with my big shot and our stitched shapes framelits. So we have uh, there are a set of 12. There's four different size circles, four ovals, four squares, and I did use the second largest circle uh, for this piece here. 
Okay. So we have that. And we are going to use the little thank you sentiment um, for our cart. And again, I wish I wish my handwriting was that good. It's not. All right, so we're gonna do uh, some masking. So I want the word thank you, but I want it to be thank and then you below it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mask off the word you with a piece of scotch tape. I'm gonna move this, oh, put it over here because I just have a bad feeling I'm gonna get ink on it. So I'm gonna ink up the thank. Most important step of this technique remove the tape. And then I'm going to stamp thank about like this. Okay. Then I'm going to clean this. Bring in the old chamois here. Clean that off. Okay. Oh, I got ink on my finger. I better clean off my finger. Oh, it's just stained. No big deal. Okay. So we've got that cleaned off. Now we're going to mask off the word thank. Okay. We're going to ink up you. Again, most important part, remove the tape. Then we're going to try to make it, you know, even and straight and centered. Did it work? Oh my gosh, it did. All right, bear with me while I get this piece of tape off my finger and put it in the trash because otherwise I'll get ink all over myself. Okay, so we have our little thank you done. Hello, Suzette. And then I did use the same technique I showed you guys earlier, <coughs> excuse me, with the Stamparatus and the, um, the flowers and the leaves. So here it is again, uh, where I have my little templates and I did all the stamping. And then here is what we are going to be using. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you join me late, um, if you just, after I post the video, you can go back and watch my first card. And that's how I show you how I worked the Stamparatus. Okay. So here is another little piece of ribbon. Same thing I just did on that last card. I folded it in half, put some tape on the edge. So it's going to be super easy to add where I want it to go. Um, I have some leaves in granny apple green. And then I have a large and medium sized flower in uh, Bermuda Bay and a uh, large flower in... Ah, pool party. Almost forgot what that was. And then this set does have a little flower center that you can use. And I did do a Bermuda Bay on the pool party and pool party on the Bermuda Bay. And I seem to be missing one tiny little thing. So we may have to just show everybody what we're doing here. So we're going to bring the Stamparatus in because I am missing a small... Oh, look at that. That's what I'm missing. How did that even happen? How, how does that even happen? I dumped out my flowers and that one just said, hey, I'm going to go hang out with the glue. Ugh. No wonder I can't ever find anything around here. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. That's what I needed. All right, so we're going to start. We've got a small dimensional here. I'm going to put that in the center of the medium-sized flower. And then I'm going to add this little guy right there. Okay, so now we just need to sort of arrange our flowers and our leaves on this circle here. So I think I wanted that one to go over like that. This one's going to come up here with our green leaf. So I'm just kind of trying to go around the thank you sentiment, kind of. And then this little guy is probably going to be on the edge here with that. So I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just add. Oh, we're getting a new glue. That's just driving me nuts. Add a little bit of glue right there. There we go. Whoops, I need it to be right there. Hee hee hee. All right, that's too much. Dab it off of my finger. Okay. So we have that put together, that glue off my finger. And now this one, we're going to add some glue right there. That was also too much. See, I went from getting no glue at all to glue overload. Okay, let's get that glue off my hand. And then this one here, we're just going to go ahead and add the glue to this leaf. do that. Okay. So I guess we'll just start, start putting some flowers on. 
that one can go there this one can go about like so I want that little guy to peek out but I need a dimensional first okay oh, for heaven's sakes And these dimensional backings, good lord, sometimes you need a real fingernail to get them off. Okay, so I think that's going to go right there. And I want that little thing. Maybe I need to cut some of it off. So I think I can just kind of shove it in there. So let me add a tiny bit of glue here. That might be too much. Lift up that little flower. There! How's that? I think that's good. Okay, now we can move all this stuff out of the way. Especially this glue that's annoying me. Okay, oh, I was going to use that on the other project. Well, we didn't need it. Okay, so then I'm going to put this on the front of the card like that. Oops, come back here. Okay. I just kind of thought this was, it's not really a fun fold but I thought it was a, an interesting way to make a card. Okay, so how about like that? Okay. Then I also have, or I thought I had, oh, here we go, the Glimmer Dots. And these are carrying over to the next catalog, so yay, because I literally love these things so much. I'm going to burnish that down a little bit. Okay. Oh, and then we have this little guy. So this is our Lemon Lime Twist Ombre Ribbon. So you can see how fun that is. This is retiring because Lemon Lime Twist is retiring also. So we are going to get a glue dot under our little bow piece there. And again, this is another way you can add a fun little accent. It doesn't really cost any money. And it is not going to add any bulk. It's just, it's just a great thing. So we're just going to lift up our circle and just kind of push that up to where we want it. Press down because it's got a glue dot on it and it's going to stick. And then we're going to take these little, whoops, doohickeys. Now I had cut these off of the main piece because of course I always make my card um, before I go live because I want to make sure that it's going to look nice and I, I'm happy with it. Um, and so I, uh, I already made it once and we're just going to add these little guys just kind of like so. And then on the inside, we can go ahead and I have some more flowers so we could add, uh, this one. We could just put that down there at the bottom. What else do we have that we, what do we have to work with here? That little guy, maybe, or is that too much? Is that too weird? I don't like that. How about this little leaf, this little leafy guy here? Yeah, he's good. He's good. Tiny bit of glue on him, and we'll just shove that right up underneath there. And I don't have another little tiny guy, so we're going to bring in this little thing. Ooh, I wonder what it would look like if we put a green flower middle. Let's, let's just be bold. Let's be bold. And we'll stamp green. I think that works just fine. Okay. And so here is our card. So fun. And I wanted to show you guys, I made another one of these using different stuff. So I ended up using the... Uh, tropical Chic patterned paper. This is also retiring and there's a lot of fun patterns in here um, to choose from. And so I went ahead and made this one. Basically the same. I haven't finished the inside, but the Tropical Chic also has coordinating dies. So I just kind of did this fun little thing here. And that, the sentiment, I kind of buckled it. Can you guys tell that that's buckled? Yeah. So that's buckled a little bit. I'll show you real quick how I do that. So you would stamp your sentiment on a skinny strip of cardstock. So pretend there's a sentiment on here. Then you take a bone folder and you just kind of go in the middle, okay? 
So you kind of make it like this. Maybe not quite so drastic, but you get the idea. And then on the ends, you curl them the opposite way, okay? Like this, all right? And then I just flag the end and you just stick it on there. So it just gives a little bit of dimension to your project, which is also kind of fun. So yay, those are kind of fun. I hope you guys liked them. Um, as always, um, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I make my money by selling Stampin' Up! products, so I would thoroughly appreciate your orders at shoppingwithbarb.com. If you do order and it's less than $150, I have a host code. I would love for you to use that too. I do offer free gifts with purchase. And what else? Uh, again, if you have any questions about anything, please um, email me, barb at barbstamps.com. I'm happy to help. I'm going to bring in my other cards here. Let me get that one that I'm not going to touch. It should be dry now. And then we have this last one here. So those are our cards. Remember to share the video. Someone's going to win the cards. Well, not this one, but these three. These are the three that I made. This is just an extra sample. And yeah, so I hope you guys remember that I will not be live next week. Um, like I said, my daughter's graduating a week from Sunday. So I've got family coming in. I've got preparations I need to make. I'm like trying to find something to wear, which I just buys clothes shopping. Can I just tell you how much I hate shopping for clothes? But I need something because um, I haven't purchased anything new for a long time and it's all, I need something new. So I'm going to have to buy something new. Anyways, so I won't be live next week, uh, but I will be live the following week unless I decide just to randomly go live for uh, whatever reason, I may do that too. So anyways, um, again, love your business here. Check out my blog at barbstamps.com for more videos and ideas. And I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.